I'm Ronnie from Ronnie's Garage and we're having our monthly tech meet and we're going to be taking apart a Turbo 400 uh, hydromatic transmission. So since we're here, I'm going to get out my fun tool here and I'll just pull that tail housing off. You know they say a penny pinched is a pound saved, right? I guess. Yeah. That's, it. That's in the UK. So there are six bolts. Hold on tail housing on. One is already out because it holds a brace for that actuator motor that bolts on the side. Um, this is a real common place for the, oh this, this has an O-ring, that's nice. Uh, real common place for these transmissions to leak is there's typically the earlier ones they have a paper gasket that is put together dry. And after time, they just crack, shrink and crack. So no amount of tightening will fix it. This should have an O-ring back here, and this right there. Actually, it's yeah, that's RTV. So that's been off before. Right the <coughs> or they just take them as they were and I'm sorry. Did Rolls Royce do anything to modify these transmissions? I don't. Not that I know of. To the internals. Not that I know of. Some, somebody could probably find the research on that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull off. This is the modulator. It's a vacuum modulator. What that does, it's hooked to a valve. As you can see this, Dave's running around. Uh, this is what tells the transmission, aside from the torque applied here and the pressures inside, this is what tells the transmission when to shift. It's hooked to a, a pipe that's hooked to the intake manifold on the car. Now, the intake manifold, when, you're, when it's idling or you're on a coast, it has super high vacuum because it wants to pull air all the time. And when you open the throttle, it pulls air as much as it can get in there with the fuel, and that's how it runs. And when you're off idle, you're choking it down. So, it's just kind of like a vacuum when you put your hand over the end, right? When it's running, it sucks your hand. That's vacuum. So that's, that tells the transmission what, how much load is on the car. So when it's on a high vacuum situation, then it says there's no load. But as soon as you put your foot in the throttle, all the vacuum drops, and it knows, OK, we've got to be in a lower gear. And that's like if you're driving down the freeway, and, or even just on the highway down this road going 45 miles an hour. If you put your foot in the throttle pretty far, it's going to downshift to second gear. Uh, it's a three speed. So this is kind of like uh, it's one of the inputs to the transmission. Real common uh, problem, what it is, is it's just a, there's a rubber diaphragm in here that keeps the fluid from coming in. And this goes up to the engine. And then there's a spring, so it's, it's got a calibration. There is an adjustment on some of them. But one, one common problem for a really, if you get a lot of blue smoke out of your car, is a broken diaphragm in here. It's sucking transmission fluid into the engine. Cleans the engine really well, but it smokes and is unattractive. Over here is the governor. That's where that, and that governor is one of the other inputs. Once I get that opened up, you'll see. Uh, the hydromatic has a governor also, and it goes off of drive shaft speed. So it doesn't work until the car starts moving. This little plate is another source of leaks. And all that does is hold this thing in here. That's your governor. Now as you spin it, you'll see that these, these weights will fly out. And these weights are attached through like little levers to valves inside. And you can see there's um, three main glands here. The glands are, are the high spots. In between, there's fluid passages. So what this does is the valving inside, when these <coughs> weights come out, it shuts off or opens up these valves. Okay. This is usually first gear shift. Once you start takeoff, 
when it goes into first gear, it's when these are both out. Boom. That's typically how that works. And it's very similar on the hydromatic. It works the same way. Is that a wear area? Uh, the, the only wear is this plastic gear. Was that right? Yeah, this, this plastic gear can break. Uh, and I've seen it happen before where they'll spin off. Uh, the only other thing that really can go bad with these is if, if the transmission is not serviced well enough, bushings start to go bad and there's gunk, it'll get in there and make those valves stick. Uh, and then another thing, uh, if you've got a broken vacuum hose on this modulator, so it can't sense vacuum, your shifts are going to be super late and super hard. So you can take off and it won't shift out of first gear until it, this takes over. Everything else takes over in like 40 miles an hour. Why, how do you know when the transmission should be serviced? Uh, it should be serviced every 24,000 miles or two years. It's, I mean, it's, it's always time or mileage. Now, one thing about this, these marks, the Bentley and Rolls, is they're not driven like normal cars, so they won't, if it says one year or 12,000 miles, uh, very few of these cars get driven 12,000 miles in a year. So uh, I always recommend doing a, a, an oil filter and a look over, I call it an annual ma maintenance, once a year, really no matter how much you drive. Uh, and then a two-year service typically will cover the transmission filter and service, uh, plugs and stuff like that. So it's really hard to go by mileage on these cars. It's really hard. So. Okay, where were we? Oh, servicing that modulator. Okay. Um, now I'm going to make a mess. Oh, look at that miniature Rolls Royce. <laughs> So that's the spare. <laughs> that's the uh, exactly. It's in the trunk. So I'm going to drain a bunch of fluid. The transmission, once the pan, once I get it off, you'll see the other side has a tube. That is the dipstick tube. Uh, the American versions, they just went into the case and they had a flat pan. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to flip this over all the way. Should I? No, I think I'll pull the front pump. So, what we're going to do is we're going to pull the front pump. Uh, it has a series of bolts. Sorry, I can't show you until I get it apart. Okay. Uh, so, these bolts, some have, what did I take off? six, some have seven bolts. They've got these little washers that should come with the kit and they're metal with like bonded metal on both sides and they're designed to keep any leakage going through there. <coughs> um, this pump housing, when you look at it, it's in there and you figure, well, I can try to pry that out, right? No, don't do that. So, this, this puts better light on it. If you look, there are two bolt holes that have threads on the inside. If you see this, this has threads in it. And there should be another one on this side should have threads. Those are 3 8 16, uh, 3 8 16 threads. I just so happen to have a puller that screws right in there. This, this whole thing should slide out. And now you can start to see inside there. This is the front pump assembly. There's a... I'm just taking it apart right now for you guys. Sources of leaks on these are this gasket. Okay. It will dry up and crack. It usually 
falls apart when you take it out. And then another, usually the source of leak, is there's a big square cut o-ring on the outside of this. This one still feels like rubber. When they're leaking, they just are brittle. They're hard as rock and they just fall apart. And when they get hard and dry like that, they shrink. You can always put, there's a big, on the car, when this is bolted to the engine, there's a big cover that bolts under here. You can pull that off, and if there's any fluid whatsoever up in this area coming from up here, then this has to come off to fix that leak. As you can see, this has some pump uh, fluid glands. See the high spots? And they've got these uh, plastic type rings on here. And then they have a passage in the center. That, that goes inside there for this front drum that has clutches in it. So when it applies that drum, it's applying pressure through a passage, that big hole right there, and these rings hold the pressure somewhat. All these pressure rings and all that in the transmission, they just pretty much hold most of the fluid. They're not a perfect seal. Uh, you gotta remember when this thing's going down the road, there's stuff flying around everywhere. Oil, even inside your engine, it's just like a just a, a 360 degree rainstorm. It's just flying everywhere. So actually we'll get into this a little later. I'm gonna pull this all the way up. Here. 